Fancy joining me for a mini road trip around Kyushu? Let's go. We started our first day in Kumamoto with a big breakfast in a cute cafe and then headed to see the Kumamoto castle. The Kumamoto castle suffered some serious damage during an earthquake in 2016, after which it has been under repair to this day. The restoration of the entire castle is scheduled for completion by the year 2052, which gives you an idea of how severely it got damaged. We continued our journey, continuously under the watchful eye of Kumamon, the Kumamoto mascot. Next to the Kumamoto castle, there is a little castle town area with restaurants, cafes and souvenir shops. We decided to snack on some steamed pork buns and much ice cream. Suisenji Garden is roughly a 20 minute tram ride away from the Kumamoto castle. Personally, I love taking a stroll around Japanese gardens while enjoying the beautiful landscaping. We were also able to spot some wildlife during our little stroll in the garden. I would definitely recommend taking a break in the Suisenji Garden tea house. Enjoying the soft breeze while sipping some matcha and enjoying some wagashi is an experience that really allows your soul to rest. We ended the evening with Kumamoto ramen, which essentially is quite similar to Hakata Tonkotsu ramen. But Kumamoto ramen has thicker noodles, the soup has chicken stock blended in with the pork broth, and the garlic is fried or roasted instead of raw garlic. On Thursday, we were due to start our mini Kyushu road trip by driving to Beppu an onsen town on the east coast of Kyushu. We started our day by picking up some bakes for breakfast. During our first drive of the day, we did a little pit stop at 7-Eleven, which gave me an opportunity to try the 7-Eleven smoothie machine for the first time. Not all 7-Elevens have this smoothie machine, so I was really excited to finally get to try it. I would say that it was okay, maybe not as good as getting a smoothie from an actual smoothie shop, but it was definitely nice for a kombini smoothie. Our first road trip stop was at Mount Aso, an active volcano in the Kumamoto prefecture. As you can see, the views at the top were astounding. <laughs> My hair's a mess. You can't really see anything. Um, Okay, so I hope if you ever go to Mount Asa that you would hopefully have a bit better weather than we did. We continued our journey to a Shinto shrine hidden in a mysterious cypress forest. The steps to the shrine are lined with 97 moss-covered stone lanterns, creating a magical pathway to another world. Right next to the entrance to the forest is a Misodengaku restaurant. Miso Dengaku has been around since the 16th century. It's grilled tofu and vegetable skewers covered with a thick, sweet and savoury miso sauce. Kyushu has numerous striking waterfalls around the island and our next stop was at the Namagataki Falls. The waterfall is 10 meters tall and 20 meters wide and what makes this waterfall a bit more interesting is that you can walk behind the waterfall. Finally, we arrived to Beppo, one of the most famous onsen towns in Japan. Beppo is located in the Oita prefecture and it produces more hot spring water than any other place in Japan. 
The view of the townscape with plumes of rising steam is rather striking. We stayed in an onsen ryokan called Sanso Kanawaen. I have to say, I was pretty happy with our private villa. It had one western bedroom, two Japanese style tatami rooms, a small outdoor area with a view of the sea, and two onsen baths, one inside and one outside. Before dinner, we wound down by taking a dip in the onsen while enjoying the night view of Beppo, after which we changed into our yukatas. For dinner, we had a teppanyaki course meal with local kuragebagi as the main. The word teppanyaki is derived from teppang, the metal plate used for cooking, and yaki, which means grilled or fried. So teppanyaki basically just refers to dishes cooked using a teppang. We just had dinner, it was teppanyaki, so local wagyu, uh, it was really good, but we're feeling very full. There's like a mud bath on the third floor, so I'm probably gonna go and try that out. And then also maybe the public bath. The room is amazing, so I'm um, saying that we have our own indoor and outdoor onsen. It's a very nice dukan. We're really enjoying it. I didn't really know what to expect of the mud bath, but it wasn't really muddy, more like a milky consistency. But apparently it was very rich in minerals and therefore good for your skin. I also took a peek at the shared onsen, but I have to say that the private onsen in our room was definitely the best. When staying at the ryokang, I really love starting my day with a morning dip in the onsen. A very zen way to start your morning. The breakfast included a wide assortment of Japanese breakfast items, from grilled fish and miso soup to abalone and many other delicacies, all served in their little separate bowls and plates. After breakfast, it was time to say goodbye to our lovely Ryokan Villa. This was such a nice room! Jigoku Meguri, or Hell's Touring, is a popular activity in Beppu. The Hells are onsens that are not for bathing, but that are unique in appearance. Kamada Jigoku is like a tasting platter with samples of the other onsens. You get a bit of everything, but not quite to the extent if you visited all the different Hells. We didn't have the time to do the full Jigoku Meguri tour, so this I think was quite a nice way to get the gist of what it's like to do the full tour. Right next to Kamado Jigoku is Oniyama Jigoku, which in addition to featuring a very powerful onsen, is a breeding facility for crocodiles. Although the thought of seeing crocodiles was exciting at first, I would definitely advise against going there. The cages seem far too crowded and many of the crocodiles seem to be missing fingers or even limbs, probably due to constant fighting with the other crocodiles. If anything, seeing these crocodiles just made me feel sad and I would not want to support the facility by paying for the entrance fee. Something else you might want to consider doing in Beppo after walking around is heading to a free foot onsen spot to rest your feet. We finished our Beppo tour by enjoying some coffee and cakes in a cafe. Before heading to our final destination, Fukuoka, we drove up to Nanzoin to see the big reclining Buddha boy. Built in 1995 and measuring 41 meters in length and 11 meters in height, this is said to be one of the largest bronze statues in the world. It's a big boy statue. When we finally got to Fukuoka, we were starving and ready for some hakata ramen. Interestingly, 
This ramen place made you feel like you were sitting in an auditorium watching the chef prepare the ramen you just ordered. Visiting the Ichirang flagship store is also a popular choice of ramen when in Fukuoka. It did look quite impressive from the outside. Walking along the riverside and seeing all the yatais or food stalls Fukuoka is famous for is something I definitely recommend. I would have loved to experience eating at a yatai, but the stars didn't seem to align for that this time. We started Saturday by touring the Yanagibashi Rengo market and having kaisendon at a place that specialised in tuna. At the edge of the marketplace, we found a cute cafe with really nice coffee overlooking the river. The Fukuoka Bay area, where the Fukuoka Tower is also located, seems to have several exhibitions available. We decided to go for the Team Lab Forest exhibition. After having done the Team Lab Borderless exhibition in Tokyo, I feel like this one wasn't too dissimilar from it. Maybe a bit more compact, but also more interactive. Okay. Fukuoka Tower is one of the main landmarks in Fukuoka, offering a great seaside view. It's 234 meters tall, so approximately the same height as the Shibuya Scramble Square building, where Shibuya Sky is also located. It was great to get the bird's eye view of Fukuoka. We ended the evening by dining at this izakaya that specializes in Japanese Sri Lankan fusion food. The use of spices was really on point, and we got to enjoy oden, takoyaki and other Japanese classics with a nice touch of Sri Lankan flavours. I would definitely recommend it. On Sunday, we were due to fly back to Tokyo, but before leaving, we decided to grab a coffee and an early breakfast at this nice cafe. I hope you enjoyed following us on our mini Kyushu road trip. I would really appreciate it if you showed some support by liking the video if you did, and hopefully see you in the next vlog. <laughs>